Welcome to the next um, session where we are looking at case one. Case one says that when the polar coordinates are given, it means they are so obvious to note that you must move to co polar coordinates and not rectangular. In the previous um, video, I made mention of when to convert or how to convert from rectangular to polar, as we can see in slide six. This will be needed in the second um, case, as well as some components of case one. So I write them down. It says my x is always r cos theta, my y is always r sine theta, and hence r is the square root of s square plus y square. This simply means that r square is what s square plus y square. So I take the first example. What we'll do here is that we'll not solve the double integrals, but then it will help you to generate the polar integrals or the polar coordinates for your double integrals. Yeah. So I said evaluating double integrals over polar rectangular regions. Yeah. So example one. It says evaluate the double integral by the region where R is given. I think I have to go with the red because we are we mean business now. <laughs> so example one, rectangular polar. R is given as one to three. Theta is given as zero to pi. What does this tell you? It means that you're looking at half of a circle. What is our function? It is three x dA. And you know, I can simply write it as zero to pi, one to three, three x. What is my dA in polar? Let me go back to my green marker and add it up here. And so in polar, your dA is always r dr d theta. Please do not forget that. So r dr d theta. I read them converting all the preambles in the question, no. There's some x guy here. So three, this x is giving us r cos theta. And so r d r d theta here. X, um, simplifying further, why do I write the limit of r as zero? It is one to three, sorry for that. It is one to three. And so if I expand what I have in here, I'll have three r square cos theta dr d theta. That is all I have to do. So it says that integral three x dA is giving us that to solve. I've moved to the polar. As I said earlier on, it's not about computing the double integrals. It's about getting your polar coordinates right. And so if I solve this correctly, I should get zero. I'll leave that one up to you to find out if indeed is zero. That is it for example one. The second example. Example two. What do we have? Um, we want to integrate x dA over a rectangular polar where r is given as one to two, and then theta is given as negative pi on two pi on two. Again, what do you do? This is so simple to do. I already have the limits given. So a matter of substitution, negative pi on two and then positive pi on two. One to two, what is X? X I know in polar coordinate is given as R cos theta, not R sine theta, that is cos. And what is my dA? My dA becomes R d R d theta. If I should expand, I have my limits here. R square cos theta d 
the R of the theta. As simple as that. And over here, if you should solve it um, with your double integrals techniques, um, you get negative 14 over three. And I'm sure I'm correct with this. 14 over three as the answer. The third example, I have four examples here. The third example, let's see what we will do here. So I've used red, green, let me go to black. Huh. Yeah, let's go to black. So example three, I have to integrate S squared plus Y squared plus three dA. But see what we have here. Interestingly, R and theta is not explained um, in an explicit form. It is not given for you to see, but it is given. <laughs> yeah. From the first two examples, the X, Y was just written for us. It was just written all throughout. But the third example, it is not. It is a word problem. It says R is a circle. There's a key word here. There's a key word, and that key word is a circle. So you know you're in polar. It has a radius of two centered at the origin. So it's something like this. Two, which is R, zero, centered at the origin. From this, what can you see? You can simply say that your R is between zero and what, two. And then your theta, because it's a full circle, your theta is zero to two pi. As simple as that. And so my original problem becomes zero to two pi, zero to two. Let's do the substitution. What is S squared plus Y squared? S squared plus Y squared gives me R squared plus my three. The A gives me R, the R, the theta. If I should expand this, I'll have zero to two. R cubed plus what? Three R, the R, the theta. This is what I have to evaluate. That is all. And again, the example here, the answer is, hmm, what do I have for the answer? 20 pi, 20 pi. Forgive me for not solving because I said initially that our interest is how to get the polar expressions done. We already have, tutorial sessions on how to do double integrals. The last example for case one, and then we end for this session. Which color are we using? Um, let's go back to red. <laughs> the last example. Okay. So it says that you want to evaluate this integral where R is a unit circle. The key word here is not just a circle, but a unit circle. So the difference with example four and example three is that in example three, we're told that it's a circle with radios. The key words were just there with radios too. So you could tell. What do we have here with this case? The only word we have is that it's a unit circle and that is enough to express our polar coordinates. Unit circle implies that your radius is one from the point zero. That is your R. And so R is zero to one. And then your theta again is zero to two pi because it's a full circle. So my double integral here becomes, um, so let me write the problem here. 
the A. It becomes 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 1, a unit sec, 1 minus. I can factorize out my negative out. I know my DA would always be R, D, R, D, theta. If I simplify further, I get 1 minus. What does this give me? R squared. R, D, R, D, theta. Again, 0 to 1. I expand, I get R minus R cube, the R the theta. And so we've converted the problem into a polar coordinate. I hope these examples have been helpful. Um, what do I have for the answer here? So you can verify the answers here. I had pi on two. Pi on two. So this is for case one. In the next session, look at when it is not obvious. Let me use that word to help us. And then what do you do with that? Thank you for the attention here. I hope you understand. If you have any concerns, you can drop it in the comment section and I will address them. All right.